Hello and welcome to day 82 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the study we're doing today is Evening by John Francis Murphy, also known as J. Francis Murphy. Um, those of you that have been following the series uh, will be getting real familiar with Francis Murphy's work. Um, He's pretty much the preeminent tonalist, I think. Uh, you know, of course, there's Georgia Ness, who started the whole thing off. But in so many ways, Francis Murphy's work really epitomizes uh, what tonalism is, you know, from beginning, middle, and end of his career. Uh, anyway, I've been reading, um, when we've got to Jan's, John Francis Murphy's days, uh, there's a section in... A History of American Tonalism, 1880 to 1920, by David A. Cleveland, and I've been reading from his chapter. Uh, I'm not sure which chapter it is, but I can tell you that uh, we've been around page 215 or so. He gets into talking about specific paintings, which are not this painting that we have uh, that we're doing a study. So I have been jumping around, but I'm going to pick it up at page 217 here. Responding to a difficult selling climate of the late uh, 1890s, a group of 12 landscape painters from the Society of American Artists, including Murphy, decided to form a group called the Society of Landscape Painters, with an annual exhibition of their own dedicated to toneless landscapes. The artists had no particular bone to pick either with the National Academy of Design or the Society of American Artists, but presumably felt that an exhibition dedicated to the toneless landscape might put their achievements in a more propitious light. Differentiating themselves from both figurative and impressionist painters in the Society of American Artists and lead to better sales. In the first exhibition in 1898, Murphy exhibited 10 works and sold seven for a total of $980.86. All sacrificed for lower prices than noted in the catalog, but they nevertheless were sales that indicated a successful packaging and publicity formula for these toneless painters, and perhaps at last a rising market for American art. That was the middle of a recession back then in the 1890s, just uh, for those of you that weren't aware. By 1900, the 1893 to 97 depression had receded into memory. William T. Evans, the major collector of toneless landscapes, sold a large portion of his collection at auction in 1900, among them seven Murphys, which brought a total of $3,215, or about three times what Evans had paid for them. With Evans' sale and Thomas B. Clark's sale of American painting the year before, in 1899, the American market in toneless landscapes began a propitious rise, outselling Impressionism and figurative and genre works, a trend that would continue well into the 1920s, and a trend we need now, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you that are feeling me with the tonalism, if you're artists, you know, get your paintbrushes out, take a take a you know stab at it. I've I've given you guys like a hundred examples of my approach to uh, to doing studies of these masters. So that's uh, sort of my gift to the world and to tonalism and to the revival of tonalism and uh, to those of you that aren't artists and just appreciate it you know buy the work of people that are doing toneless work and let's get this up off the ground again because this is some of the most moving and expressive work that a painter can do um, I can see we're getting close to the end here so if you would like to see some of my personal toneless paintings go to landscapepainter.co.nz we'll see you tomorrow for day 83 and meanwhile take good care and stay out of trouble